Hello everyone. Myself Dr. Lakshma Reddy from MLR Institute of Technology. So today uh, we will discuss about RC oscillators. In the last video lecture, we have discussed about what do you mean by oscillator, what the conditions of oscillator that is Barkhausen criteria and the types of oscillator. Today our overview of presentation is what do you mean by RC oscillators and what are the types of oscillators, basic principle of wind bridge oscillator and the circuit analysis, its operation and working and the condition for the sustained oscillation, its advantages and disadvantages. So first of all, what is RC oscillators? So these RC oscillators are mainly employ of, uh, it consists of resistors and capacitors. They are more suitable for generating low frequency signals and they are also known as AF oscillators. So RC oscillators are also called as AF oscillators. They have good frequency stability. Coming to the types of RC oscillator, mainly this RC oscillator belongs to low frequency generator oscillators, low frequency generator oscillators. So under low frequency generator RC oscillator, a low frequency generator oscillator, we are having RC oscillator and this RC oscillator is again divided into two that is one is wind bridge oscillator and the next one is RC phase shift oscillator. In this video, we will discuss about the wind bridge oscillator. What is the basic principle of this wind bridge oscillator? So it consists of mainly two stages of amplifiers and each amplifier will have a phase shift of 180 degrees. So the total of phase shift will be 360 degrees. That is for first one amplifier, the phase shift will be 180 degrees. And again, we will use one more amplifier that phase shift is 180 degrees. So the both the two combination of this 180, 180, it, the results in 360 degrees or zero degree of phase shift which will satisfy our Barkhausen criteria and here a fraction of the output from the second stage is again given back to the input of the first stage without producing any further phase shift so this is also this feedback is nothing but positive feedback that we, we will use in oscillator and this oscillator can be used from a range of 10 hertz to a maximum of 10 megahertz and it is mainly extensively used as audio oscillator since its out output is free from circuit fluctuations and ambient temperature. Circuit analysis. The circuit arrangement of wind bridge oscillator is shown in the be uh, below figure and it consists of a two stage amplifier with an RC bridge circuit and uh, we can see from this. So as we have discussed the wind bridge circuit it consists of two amplifiers two stage amplifier so this is the one stage and this is the second stage so in the first stage it consists of a transistor t1 which is uh, connected in a ce configuration and similarly the second stage which consists of a transistor t2 which is also connected in ce configuration so the output of this will be for example the input will be like the, if the input is like this then it will produce a 180 degree phase shift so the output will be like this and again this uh, this phase shift signal is given to the second amplifier then the resulting output waveform will be like this which will be same as input that means the net the, the total phase shift will be 360 degrees and here we will use a wind bridge network this is the wind bridge network this is the wind bridge network and it consists of two arms so uh, two arms which consists of a resistors R1, R2, R3 and here R4 resistor and two capacitors C1 and C2. Here C1 is in series with R1 resistor, C1 is in series with R1 resistor and here R2 is parallel to the capacitor C2. And from the circuit we can see the output is in is again given to the input of the feedback network. Here the feedback network is our wind bridge. Wind bridge. This is a wind bridge circuit where it is getting the feedback from the output. And this is nothing but the negative feedback. Negative feedback. And coming to this uh, circuit explanation, uh, it consists of the transistor to a T1 with its biasing network which acts as an oscillator and amplifier and while the other transistor T2 is its biasing network. See from the circuit, the transistor T1 and the 
the transistor T1 acts as an oscillator and amplifier while the other transistor that is T2 transistor this is the T2 transistor it will act as biasing network which acts as an inverter why it is called as inverter as we have seen the in the output of this transistor T1 is inverter that is the here the phase shift is like this but here it is inverting the output of this transistor T1 when we can see the output of T1 and T2 the output of the transistor T1 and the output of the transistor to uh, T2 both are out of phase that is a 180 degree phase shift but when compared to the input of this transistor T1 that is this input waveform it is same as the output of that uh, transistor T2 okay so these are in in phase so from this we can tell that the total phase shift uh, of this T1 transistor and T2 transistor is 360 degrees the total phase shift is 360 degrees the t the transistor t1 acts as an oscillator and acts as an oscillator and amplifier and the frequency of oscillations provided by the series element r1 c1 and the parallel element r2 c2 of the bridge network so here the frequency of oscillations is provided by watch this r1 c1 which is in series and r2 and c2 which are in parallel and Wienbridge circuit is also known as lead lag network. The Wienbridge circuit is also known as lead lag network. So at low frequency it acts as lead network and at high frequency it acts as lag network. So remember this Wienbridge circuit, uh, Wienbridge circuit is also known as lead lag network and at very low frequencies it acts as lead network and at high frequency it acts as lag network. The frequency of oscillation is determined by the series element R1, C1 and parallel element R2, C2 of the bridge as we have discussed and it is given by the expression F equal to 1 by 2 pi square into square root of R1, C1 into R2, C2. If, if we have assumed that R1, R2 equal to R and C1 equal to C2 equal to C, then we will get F equal to, see, F equal to 1 by 2 pi for our assumption R1 and R2 is equal to R. So we can write R1, R2 is nothing but R square C1, C2 equal to C. So we can write as C square. So what is the final expression for this? F equal to 1 by 2 pi RC. So this is the frequency of oscillation for the Wienbridge circuit. F equal to 1 by 2 pi RC. So for this the derivation can be seen in the upcoming video lectures. So when the circuit is on, the bridge circuit will produce an oscillation of the of the frequency stated above that is this f equal to 1 by 2 pi rc when the circuit will on as we know that for the oscillator there will be no input but when the circuit will be on when we are giving this vcc when this vcc is uh, given to this circuit then the circuit will be get on so when the circuit is on the bridge circuit will produce the oscillations of the frequency and the two transistor will produce a total phase shift of 360 degrees and uh, uh, so as we have seen the two transistor T1 and T2, the T1 will produce a phase shift of 180 degrees and the T2 will produce more 180 degrees. So the total phase shift will be 360 degrees and the negative feedback in the circuit ensures constant output. How we are giving the negative feedback from the output of the transistor T2 to the input of the bridge network. So this is achieved by the uh, temperature sensitive tungsten lamp LP. So how we can give uh, achieve this negative feedback? So this negative feedback can be give, uh, achieved by having a LP here. The LP tungsten, uh, the R4 resistor is replaced by a lamp LP. From where we can achieve the negative feedback in the circuit, and amplitude of the output increases more current will be produced and more negative feedback is achieved. So due to this, the output will uh, return to the original value. So where uh, it is equal to zero and whereas if the output tends to decrease, reverse action could take place. But whether it will be increases or decrease, the output voltage will be constant. And the desired frequency of oscillation can be produced by varying the two capacitors C1 and C2 simultaneously. And these oscillations are fed to the first transistor T1 and after amplification, these oscillations will fed to the second transistor T2. So from the figure we have seen, the first 
oscillations will uh, given to the first transistor T1 and after the amplification of the uh, from the transistor T1 it will given to the second transistor that is T2. Here the T1 uh, T2 acts as inverter and the T1 acts as amplifier and as we have discussed earlier the total phase shift will be 360 degrees and this circuit will provides a positive feedback through R1 C1 R2 C2 to the transistor T1. How? So from the circuit we can see this is given back to the feedback circuit. What? The output of the transistor T1 is again given to this. That means here uh, the phase shift will be only 180 degrees. Here the, uh, for example, uh, the input is like this and the output will be as it is a CE amplified, the phase shift will be one, only 180 degrees. So you will get an output like this and this is given back to the input and here the input will be like this and the whatever the uh, uh, input that we are giving from the output of the transistor T1 will be like this. So these two are in out of phase, out of phase. So we can call it as a negative feedback. If it, if the output and the input are in phase, then we can call it as a positive feedback. So that's what here we are discussing. The circuit will provide a positive feedback through R1, C1 and R2, C2 to the transistor T1 and a negative feedback through the voltage divided to the input of the transistor T2. Here, a fraction of the output energy that is uh, from the transistor T2 is given back to the uh, our oscillatory circuit that is nothing but our bridge circuit. And the positive feedback is to meet the losses in the oscillator and hence and that oscillations are produced. And a negative feedback will ensure the stability and the constant output. So this negative feedback is provided through our voltage divider circuit that is R3 and R4. Usually a temperature sensitive tungsten lamp is used in place of R4 as we have seen in the circuit. And resistance R3 and the lamp LP which is uh, replaced with the uh, R4 resistor is generally used to stabilize the amplitude of the output. So here the first condition should be uh, the ratio of R1 and R2 should be equal to 2 and the second condition is that zero phase shift is obtained by both the transistors and the tank circuit in the feedback in order to get sustained oscillation. So in order to get the sustained oscillation already we know that there should be a 360 degree phase shift or zero degree phase shift. And one more condition is the ratio of R1 and R2 equal to 2 and this derivation will be seen in the upcoming videos. Coming to the advantage, the output is constant and its working is quite simply and easy and the overall gain is high. It is far better stability and the frequency of oscillation can be easily adjusted. Coming to the disadvantages, it cannot be used to uh, generate very high frequencies. Why? Because it is mainly used for to generate only the low frequency signals. And as we are using more components, it is somewhat costlier. So today's summaries. First, we will uh, we have seen what do you mean by oscillator and the types of RC oscillators that are Wien bridge and RC phase shift. In that, we have discussed about the Weinbridge oscillator and its construction, operation, its circuit, its disadvantages and disadvantages. So in the next video, we will see the frequency derivation. Already we have derived F equal to 1 by 2 pi RC and one more condition is the ratio of R1 by R2 equal to 2. So in the next video lecture, we will see the derivation part of the frequency and R1 by R2 equal to 2. Thank you.